Dear brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Thank God, it's time to read Bible. Let's continue to read Genesis chapter thirteen. We will start from verse eight today. We read previously that because Abram and Lot's possession was so great, that strife arose between Abram's herdsmen and Lot's. Verse eight. So Abram said to Lot, "Please let there be no strife between you and me, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren." When it comes to the strife between the brothers, what Abram saw was the testimony of God. Because we are brothers, we shouldn't have the strife in front of the Gentile, because God sent them to the land of Canaan, where Canaanite and Perizzite dwelled. What Abram saw was that we should have a good testimony, even if it was among the Gentile. What Lot saw was the interest. Lot knew that Abram treated him like his own son, and Abram depended on him a lot on a lot of things. He wanted to leave, but didn't know how to open his mouth to tell Abram. So he allowed his servants and herdsmen to fight with Abram's herdsmen. He didn't come out to solve the problem. On one hand, he didn't know how to tell Abram that he wanted to leave him, but on the other hand, he knew that Abram was a generous person. If Abram come out to solve the problem because of his his generosity, Lot could get what he wanted. At the same time, it didn't sound like he fought for it. Abram at this time had gone through Shechem, where he knew that God was reliable. After that, he went to Bethel, where he saw that God's will was on God's house. He also saw that even though men sold the house of God, often time they still lived in between Bethel and Ai, and in an unguarded moment, they could be attracted by the world and could be weak and fall. Abram also experienced failure. He went down to Egypt when there was a famine in the south. He did things that sh- he shouldn't have done in Egypt. He left Sarai to be taken by Pharaoh, but God protected his wife. He also gained a lot of possessions. He came to realize what was God's protection in all these experiences. God not only helped us when we were strong, but also guarded us through different circumstances. When we were weak and we fell and fell, even though he didn't answer our prayer, therefore he could go back to Bethel. At this time, he not only understood God's faithfulness, but also experienced God's protection when he failed. He learned not to fight for his interests when he, he encountered difficulties. Instead, he lifted all these things up in God's graceful hands, so God's will could be revealed. At this time, Abram was Abram that recognized God's sovereignty. He was Abram who was willing to leave himself in God's hands. He didn't choose for himself and plan for himself. He rather wait for God's leading. Verse nine. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate for me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. When he was in Haran, God revealed Himself to him and asked him to get out of his country, his kindred, and his father's house to a land that God would show him. But because he couldn't totally depend on God, he took Lot along so he could depend on him. But now, after he went through all these experiences. God wanted him to leave Lot, so he said to Lot generously, "The whole land is before you. Please separate from me. I will let you choose first. If you take the left, I will go to the right. If you go to the right, I will go to the left." In contrast to Abram's heroism and generosity, Lot appeared to be very narrow. He only thought of his own interest. Verse ten, and Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere as you go towards Zoar. They were at Bethel and on the hill, looking east, they could see Jericho and the plain of Jordan. The Jordan River flowed onto the Dead Sea. Zoar was on the South Dead Sea. Lot had set his heart that he would go there. Majority of the land of Canaan that God promised to Abram, Abram, were mountains. Life was relatively hard. 
but east of Canaan, both sides of Jordan River were plains and were well water everywhere. Life, livestock needed water and pasture. The plain of Jordan was the most ideal place. He might have been planned in his heart that he would get that land. It was a better choice in the eyes of man and the world. How did the Bible describe this land? The second half of verse 10. Before the law destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the law, like the land of Egypt, Bible uses three words to describe this place. First, it was like the garden of the law, which referred to garden of Eden. Before the fall, Garden of Eden was the place that God put Adam and Eve in after he made them. All were good in there. There was God's full provision. God and mankind, mankind and all God's creation were in harmony. God only allowed mankind to live in the garden when they had no sin. After Adam sinned, God drove him, them out of the garden. Because after mankind sinned, evil desire came out of the sin. When they were dragged away by their own evil desire, it gave birth to hatred. Mankind lost the privilege to live in the Garden of Eden. The plants around the Jordan River looked like the Garden of the Law. It was good. Secondly, like the land of Egypt, they could no longer have Garden of Eden, so they went to the next. At that time, Egypt was the best place in the world because Nile River overflowed regularly. The surrounding lands was very fertile. It produced abundant crops. Many times when Canaan had famine, people went down to Egypt to seek help. The plain of Jordan was well watered. It, was, it also looked very fertile and attractive. Of course, Egypt also symbolized the world. Once you enjoy the cozy life, men fall into the war. Inside there was sin in man. Outside there was the world dragging men away. Thus men fell into the third circumstance, that is, Sodom and Gomorrah. A verse is inserted here. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, we will read in Genesis chapter 19 that because the two cities were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the law, God had to pronounce judgment against them. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom means burning, and Gomorrah means submersion. On one hand, it tells that when men indulge in their evil desire, the loss in them burned and eventually submerged, submerged men. These two cities became highly corrupting cities. God sent his angels to judge. These two cities were burned up and submerged in this fire. At this time, Lot couldn't see that far ahead. He was not called by God. He followed his uncle to Canaan. He had possession now, so he wanted to be independent. He fought for, his, he fought for himself the best place. He, his choice were earthly. Verse 11, Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. In contrast to Abram's heroism and generosity, Lot appeared to fight for himself. He picked the plain of Jordan that he had set his eyes on. Then he moved. He left Canaan, which God promised to Abram. They separated from each other. Verse 12. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. God's will was fulfilled in this event of the separation between Aaron, Abram and Lot. In the process of it, Abram was built up. In following God and in building the altar to offer sacrifice, he realized that his sovereignty must be transferred. He had to stand on a right position, which was the land of Canaan that God promised to him. He knew that his existence was bound to God, not to the world. What was good in man's eyes might not be good in God's eyes. Therefore, he gave his right of choice to God and allowed God to choose for him. The way to allow God to choose was to let others pick first. What was left was what God would give to you. What was good in man's eyes might not be good. 
What was bad in men's eyes might not be bad, as long as we have God's blessing. What was bad in men's eyes could become a beautiful blessing from God, because our existence is bound to God, not to the world. The lesson that Abraham had learned will be a lesson that each one of us has to learn. One day, God will save us from our short-sighted and from the worldly values. We will learn to stand at God's position and see from the perspective of eternity what is valuable. And we will learn that under all circumstances, what we should hold tight of is God's blessing, not the benefits that men see. What is God's blessing for us at this time when the virus is vast spread and most of the people are in panic? Do you have peace and joy from God? If you have, it's the blessing from God. As you are trapped in the house and can't go anywhere, you can enjoy the simple family life with your families and receive the provision from God. This is a blessing from God. So Christian value is eternal, heavenly. Spiritual and life, because of of our constraint, we can spend more time on God's words every day. We can spend more time on spiritual con- connection with our families. All these will have eternal value. But Lot dwelled in the cities of plain. He had the good enjoyment of the earth. The enjoyment made him gradually pitch his tent even as far as Sodom. Verse thirteen. But the men of Sodom were exceed exceedingly wicked and sinful against the law. When Lot chose the short term benefit and the visible interest, because he seek after comfort and pleasure, he gradually pitched his tent towards south. Eventually, he dwelled in Sodom, which was a sinful city. We will see in the following chapters. That because he seek after the comfort at the moment, his entire family had great loss at the end. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to make choices in our life every day on a lot of things. Is your choice earthly or heavenly? Is your choice short term or eternal? God may God help us to have the mind of Abraham, to leave the right of choice to God. The environment that God prepares for us is always the best. And right for us, we should receive with thanksgiving. Let's pray together. Lord, you love us. You want to give us the best. Give us heavenly vision, so we will know that what's the best. Help me to look up upon your salvation often in my life and receive your heavenly blessing. Let me witness in my life that you are faithful God and God that give abundant spiritual provisions. I lift today's life in your hand, that I will please you. Pray in Jesus' name.